Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Andrew Missick, and I want to talk about the St. Jude Thaddeus Film Project that I worked on. And uh, I have these two books, which I'm going to discuss in a few moments, based on our movie project. This is the St. Jude Thaddeus Storybook, and this is St. Jude Thaddeus and the Legend of the Shroud. And I think these, these books came out very professional, and uh, they're available on Amazon. So, just recently a film came out, which is in theaters now as I uh, record this. Uh, it's called His Only Son, and it's about Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac. And uh, I went and watched it, and I thought it was a good movie. And, uh, you know, the story of, of the sacrifice of Isaac is, of course, it's very, for some people, it's, you know, it's disturbing that God would ask uh, Abraham to, to uh, sacrifice his son. But the, the film shows, I mean, it, it humanizes Abraham, it, it looks in his life and helps you understand Sarah, her point of view, her sufferings. Uh, so it's a very moving, dramatic picture, but it also it ties it in to show that, that all this is really about, which is very important, is about Jesus, it's about Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, how that Abraham sacrificing his son was prefiguring uh, the crucifixion, the death, the sacrifice of the only begotten Son of, of God. Uh, the, uh, the, we see that's what it's really about. So it's a very good film. And it's put out by Angel Studios. It's the same people who put out the, uh, the Chosen film. And I've seen parts of the Chosen movie. And uh, as a trained theologian, there are certain things that I, I don't like about uh, the Chosen but it's been blessing to many people, and uh, I haven't watched the whole thing. I remember a few years ago, History Channel did a series on the Bible, and I could nitpick it because there's a lot of you know minor inaccuracies here and there. It's like, who's the biblical consultant uh, for this this film? I don't see this isn't a budgetary issue. Why are they making these minor mistakes? But then I realized it's like, okay, I'm a Bible scholar. For someone who doesn't know the Bible as well as they should, uh, this series could be very enlightening, expand their biblical knowledge, perhaps create a, a desire to, you know, they're learning about the Bible and they create a desire to learn even more. Uh, but we need to be using the dramatic arts and films to advance the, the, the message of God, the Word of God, the Bible, and the world. Now the interesting thing about this film, uh, His Only Son, and uh, it features Middle Eastern Arabic actors, of course the movie's in English, and I think that's it's good to have people uh, reflecting the actual ethnicity of you know, the biblical characters and bringing in uh, Arab and Arab Christian uh, actors in these these presentations. Of course, it's the same thing with uh, uh, the, the actor who plays uh, Jesus in the Chosen films. He's I think he's half Syrian and half Egyptian, uh, so he's a Middle Easterner, and that's you know creates more authenticity having uh, those those uh, actors. So the interesting thing about the the uh, his only son movie. Uh, I think the, uh, the director is David Helling, and uh, he only had a quarter million dollars. Now, for my movie, we had like five thousand dollars to create what we did. So David David Helling is the is the uh, director, and I was watching the 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 uh, the credits of the movie, and he did a lot more than just direct. It's like he made the entire movie. Of course, he had important collaborators, but he did a lot uh, himself. Uh, but I have a lot in common with, with David Helling. Um, he's a uh, Operation Iraqi War, uh, Iraqi Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom War veteran, as I am. I've had two deployments. I think he had one. He's a Marine. And um, I respect, it's like, when you go into a combat zone, and it's not just being shot at or engaging in, uh, in, in active combat, <laughs> just the hardships of, of, of uh, military life in a war zone. And, you know, basically it's the Army and the Marines who do the, the war fighting. And, and uh, that's what I did. That's what uh, David Helling did. And I appreciate the Air Force, the Navy, for their, their contributions. But uh, when it comes to the American fighting man, it's uh, Army veterans and people in the military like me and uh, people like uh, the Marines. So when he was in Iraq, he started having a hunger for the Word of God. He came out and he realized that we need to communicate the biblical message through film. 
so he went. He took his GI Bill and he went to, to film school. Now I took a different route. I started out in the Army Reserves and I transitioned to the National Guard. The Army basically paid for my education, and my education was for, for me to fulfill my ambition to become a Army chaplain, uh, which is actually an ambition to serve soldiers and administer to their needs. Something I felt the calling to do. A lot of sacrifices and hardship, and you know, a lot of education because we have to have a master's degree. And of course, I also got a doctorate. Uh, the military did pay for you know a lot of my education. Uh, a lot of it I had to pay for myself, but the bulk of it was paid for. Uh, but I didn't get, uh, I didn't go to film school. I don't think you need to go to film school to become a great filmmaker. I don't believe uh, George Lucas went to film school, but uh, Steven Spielberg never did. And you have Robert Rodriguez and others. I mean, it's not necessary. Uh, to go to film school, but I'm sure it has great benefits. So uh, David Helling did go to, fi to film school, and he made this independent film. I, like I said, I only got $5,000. He got quarter million. He had $250,000. And I guess during uh, COVID, he was able to edit and refine and put special effects in it uh, to make it a better product. And then he went to uh, Angel Studios to show them that they were pleased with it. They, they released it in theaters. And we're starting to see that there's an audience for faith-based movies again. Um, when, when movies start out, once I started getting into independent Christian filmmaking, you know, I started studying film, you know, or looking at film differently, looking at the history of film. And of course, you know, when they started making movies, you know, uh, they started making biblical movies and faith-based movies. Even uh, Cecil B. DeMille, he made faith-based movies. And I was just looking at the titles of some of these films and some of the issues we, you know, that we think are modern and the world's never dealt with them before, like you know the clash of you know religion versus science or you know atheism versus uh, belief in God. He's making movies dealing about this, and uh, Cecil B. DeMille was, I guess, he's a Jewish Christian, uh, and he made he made King of Kings, which is a Life of Christ movie. Uh, I'm interested in developing that to a stage production because it's actually a good silent picture. Uh, and of course, he did Ten Commandments, a silent movie, and he re made it as a, uh, you know, Technicolor film, in the late 1950s, I believe. Um, so, all these, you know, Hollywood is cranking out for for decades biblical films, a lot of classics, and innovative innovative films. I mean, like the, the Chariot Race and Ben Hur is amazing. They they redid Ben Hur, and uh, it was okay, but it 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 didn't have the emotional depth. Uh, of the original Ben Hur, and you know that chariot race sequence wasn't really outdone in the new movie. Uh, even though there are certain things, I guess they were able to do technically better in the new one. It, but like I said, it didn't have the emotional depth of the, the, the uh, Charlton Heston version. The Robe was the first widescreen movie. So uh, around the time of the hippies revolution, uh, they stopped making. I think the, the last great biblical epic was probably the greatest story ever told. And that launched uh, Max von Sydow's career. He just died recently, uh, unfortunately. But there were, at that time, until he had, a, I think, one movie in the 80s. is like King David with Richard Gere. But when, when Mel Gibson made The Passion of Christ, all of a sudden we started seeing new uh, Christian films coming out. Uh, but during that time when there wasn't that many theatrical releases, a lot of important biblical miniseries, like... Uh, the Jesus of Nazareth miniseries and uh, Peter and Paul with Anthony uh, Hopkins, they were released on television. Of course, now we're in a new world where uh, a lot of what we consider theatrical releases in the past, of course, are released on uh, streaming. So, technology's changed. Uh, that he was just the amazing thing that he's able to make uh, this movie a quarter million dollars. And a lot of movies, <laughs> it's amazing. A lot of movies in Hollywood. Are you know thirty million dollars? That's that's typical. Uh, I mean, a ten dollar, a ten million dollar movie would be a, a, a low budget film for Hollywood. And uh, some of these these films, like these superheroes or science fiction film, uh, you're looking at two hundred million dollars, three hundred million dollars, and, and sometimes it's like they spend so much money making these films that it takes them a long time to uh, recoup their expenses. So another thing I want to mention really quick was I think the Sherwood Baptist Church where they made they started making these faith-based movies. It's kind of petering out, but they uh, facing the giants, uh, the war room, uh, courageous. If 
fireproof and others. I mean, these are, it's just one, it's showing that there's a demand for these films and nobody's making it. So this, this, uh, I guess a quasi mega church in Georgia started making films and uh, made a big impact. So this is something we need to be doing. And we look at society and culture today and, uh, you know, look like we're in a neo-pagan society, a post-Christian society. And, uh, for those of us with traditional values, it's like, well, how did this happen? How did we come to this? And uh, Ben Shapiro wrote a book several years ago called Primetime Propaganda, uh, mostly focusing on television, but showing how entertainment is used by left-wingers in this entertainment industry to change American society and culture, to reshape it in their image and their goal of a anti-Christian, uh, totalitarian, Marxist state. That's apparently what they want. And they're trying to shape the culture through entertainment. Uh, they're like the real televangelists with their worldly antichrist gospel. And but it's our fault that we're losing influence because we're not creating. Uh, we're not uh, impacting the world. We're not putting out uh, content uh, to reach the world through entertainment with the message of, positive message of the Bible. So, um, I wrote this scholarly article several years ago, I think it's this one. It's in this, uh, it's called, uh, it's Marthoma about the, the story of St. Thomas in India. And uh, the article got picked up and published. This is this one about Socotra. So, um, a film producer saw this article and he, and he read it and uh, he uh, approached me for making a biblical uh, film on the story of St. Saint, Thomas the Apostle. Now, um, we tried to raise money for that project, that project but we, we didn't make enough to do St. Thomas in India. So what I decided to do is that we would do a, uh, a movie as like a stepping stone project, The Life of St. Jude Thaddeus. So, I guess I've been rambling on a little bit too much, but the, the point of this is, you know, I, we got this, this film, my, just, my brother Josiah played, this is kind of like our theatrical feature, my brother Josiah directed and he portrayed St. Jude Thaddeus, and we have this, this goal of why don't we tell the story of the Twelve Apostles, uh, do a series of film about each of the twelve apostles because they have very interesting stories that have come down to us by uh, from the early church fathers, especially the story of Saint Thomas in India, which is important because he's the. Uh, I'm, I've been to India twice, and uh, that's very meaningful and important to the Christians there that their community is founded by Saint Thomas. We have the, the stories, uh, their own oral traditions, but also the stories in the uh, the Acts of Thomas about Thomas evangelizing India, and then recent discoveries which I mentioned in my uh, my research paper. Uh, seem to indicate that it's not just, we're not just talking about myth or legend, we're talking about um, something that's probably, we don't know, we don't know for definite, but it's, very, it's a historical probability that Thomas actually did go to India. Um, so this is the book, uh, St. Jude Theus. I talked to my brother Josiah and says, why don't we just release this movie, just put it up on, on, uh, on YouTube so people can see it. And he says, well, I want to refine it first uh, and then we could do that because we're looking at five years since we filmed and it hasn't been released yet. And uh, this is, uh, f to, to start off with, I did a docudrama presentation uh, with a different actor, my, my, one of my military friends named Toby uh, Vera. He played uh, Jeep Thaddeus in this. This is a storybook based on the docudrama. And I have done a, st a couple of series. I have playlists on my, or our uh, YouTube channel, Apostolic Productions, uh, that shows, uh, well, it's got a lot of excerpts from the, the, the film. It's me teaching about, you know, what we know from the Bible, what we know from the early church fathers and the apocryphal texts and other writings in early history about Jude Thaddeus especially. And uh, <clears throat> Jude Thaddeus is a very um, popular saint in Catholic uh, circles, uh, especially as a saint of lost and desperate causes. Uh, so there's an interest in the story of this saint. He's also the founder of the Assyrian Church of the East. Uh, and his story is mentioned in some of the earliest histories of the church that we have. Uh, so I decided that I need to get back in putting 
our film product out there and I got a lot of material. I wish I could find somebody or hire somebody to help me edit this to, to uh, like I said, make it as, as refined as possible. Um, I am pleased with a lot of what we did for the theatrical feature, the St. Jude Thaddeus Legend of the Shroud and for the docudrama. Uh, and I'm going to do another series, <clears throat> which will be called, um, I guess I'll just call it the new St. Jude, Jude Thaddeus series. And uh, there's been a lot of distractions. Um, I did this project and then I had to go on military duty for the, with the National Guard to do the border mission. And then uh, I guess David Helling had the opportunity to, to work on his movie because of COVID. But uh, COVID has been a time of great trials and tribulations uh, for me. Uh, we had a lot of people in our, our church, I think over 10 people and we're a small congregation passed away mostly from COVID. Some people just died from other causes and, and including my father and stepmother and uh, uh, lost a lot of loved ones young and older uh, so uh, through various it's just one one tragedy disaster after another uh, so it's been a time of turmoil and things have been in disarray uh, and, and probably in every aspect of my life unfortunately uh, but now I see it's time to get back um, on task and get back to uh, this important thing, which David Helling's done, done it, doing it, and uh, we need more people. Uh, the Bible story is important, I th and, and I, I really enjoy biblical films, uh, but we need to also have uh, various, there's a lot of stories we could tell uh, through church history, but also how the gospel uh, can be lived out and experienced and how it impacts our lives and plays out in the modern world, around the world, and uh, the answer that we have uh, from the Word of God through scriptures, through the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, for the problems that the world faces, how Christ heals, the relevancy of the gospel today. So there's a lot of stories that need to be told. And in the end, I'm going to make a couple points to conclude on this. Um, two, two things. Uh, Jesus, you know, the Messiah, how did he convey the message of the kingdom. He did it through narrative, through telling stories. In fact, the scripture says that he didn't uh, say, and it's probably hyperbolic here, he didn't say anything at all without using a, a, a parable or a story. And uh, John's gospel isn't as heavy as the, uh, the synoptic gospels on parables, but we have you know parables there as well. Uh, about the shepherd, about the the the, uh, the vineyard, and uh, the the father being the husband, and so all the gospels. Of course, you have the narrative of Jesus' life, but you have Jesus as a storyteller and using examples from daily life and of, of people uh, to impart spiritual truths. And I remember uh, I went to the International Christian Film Festival for our film. We have a uh, music video, and actually was nominated for an award with our talented uh, operatic singer who played uh, one of the roles for our movie, it's Leia, Leia Fisher, Leia Rose Fisher. And uh, so we go to this uh, International Christian Film Fest Festival and they had some seminars, so I'm attending the seminar and someone was talking about how, you know, you know, the first person in the Bible mentioned as being filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, like, well, who were they? You know, we know Samson was full of the Holy Spirit. Seems like, you know, Moses is obviously full of the Holy Spirit, wasn't he? But the Bible, <laughs> the first people that that uh, the Bible describes as being filled with the Holy Spirit were artists, were creators. It's uh, Oliab and Bezel, uh, the two artists who created the Ark of the Covenant and the other furnishes of the temple. These artists, these people creating artistic output were described as the first, I mean, I'm sure people before then <laughs> and of course afterwards were filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, but these are the first individuals specifically described as being filled with the Holy Spirit, and they are creators. And we need that today. Um, and, you know, the Bible is, is literature, the Bible is art, the Bible is inspired art, and it's, it's time for us to engage the arts, engage cinema and uh, Christian filmmaking to tell the story of the good news. And this lost and white, wayward generation we found ourselves in, I was preaching the other day, and... Uh, Jesus is talking about his generation. It's an evil and adulterous generation. And we think about that generation. I mean, I guess 
<laughs> you know, just through their unbelief, that's something that's evil in and of itself, or, or in hypocrisy. But we look at the, the wickedness and sins in modern society, what kind of generation do we live in? An evil and adulterous generation, but it seems to be a lost generation. I was speaking earlier before about um, this new advent of Christian filmmaking. And uh, recently we had this film called The Jesus Revolution that, that came out. And it overperformed. They thought it was going to make, end up making, well, they, they projected that it was going to make us only the third of what it really did. It did two or three times. Uh, I, don't, I don't have the exact numbers, but it, it, it outperformed their expectations in a very impressive way. And the, the, uh, his only son film, uh, that this movie <laughs> created by you know, a Iraq war veteran on a shoestring budget uh, that he was able to do that good a job on it and that he was able to, to be picked up and, and uh, be distributed. And then on top of that, uh, that it also uh, far exceeded uh, expectations. So I think so far, uh, it, I think it's, it's last I saw it made over $11 million. That doesn't sound, sound like a lot, but <laughs> think about it. He makes the movie for uh, for a quarter million dollars, and it makes $11 million. That's a big return on the investment that he spent on the, on the movie. But of course, um, there are a lot of other expenses with distribution and, and advertising. But this is also uh, kind of spreading like wildfire through, uh, through word of mouth. And uh, like he's saying in the film, it's like when we put out you know, quality Christian entertainment, people need to go and watch it. And people are. There is an audience for it. And uh, the messages that are in these movies, such as in um, in the movie uh, The Jesus Revolution. And, of course, this, this movie about Abraham humanizes him. And, you know, it also explains, it's like, what is this about? Why would God tell Abraham to, you know, to, it seems tortuous. It's like, no, God has a plan, you know, a, a plan through Abraham. He is going to be the ancestor through this Miracle son. See, there's a lot of parallels between Isaac and uh, Yeshua and, and Jesus. Uh, as the only son, as a child of promise, miracle born, uh, all these things. So, uh, hopefully, just pray for me <laughs> as, we, as we get back and, and we need to put this, this project out there. And uh, hopefully, we can move on to other projects that I have in mind and continue Christian filmmaking. So this is the book. Uh, that's one way you could support the project is purchase these books. And I'll, I'll uh, you know, everything I want to do is, 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 is for the Lord and the Lord's work uh, to advance the kingdom. So uh, I, and I do believe that the way forward for the church today is to go back to our beginnings uh, and uh, go back to these men uh, who are specifically chosen by Jesus of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, and um, the lives they, li they lived. And we, have, we know a lot about the Twelve Apostles, but a lot of people, it's not common knowledge because uh, there's a lot of information about them in the Bible, but a lot, most of the information about the fate of the Apostles uh, is in uh, the writings of ancient historians and the early church fathers and, and other extra-biblical texts, which isn't accessible so much uh, to the modern... Uh, Christian audience, but I think these stories need to be told and are important. And uh, I do have other concepts I was, you know, I'm interested in. And uh, David Helling is planning on starting with Abraham, uh, film almost all the Bible. And uh, in conclusion, when uh, the Bible, the the epic miniseries, you know, History Channel came out, I mean, there's certain stories. I think like uh, Daniel. Um, and it's like, I don't know that there's been a motion picture about Daniel in the lion's den. Uh, you know, the, the stories of Daniel are very, <laughs> very powerful and compelling stories. And as I'm watching this, it's like, well, no one's really told this story in 100 years of, of filmmaking. We haven't seen this uh, on, on, you know, on film or, or television or streaming or any, anything. So, and it's, it's amazing. I mean, this is the Bible. These are stories people know. And it's, it's kind of surprising that... At certain stories like the story of Elijah. I don't think there's been a movie made about that yet either. And uh, I don't remember them how much of that they showed in the day, the, uh, the Bible epic miniseries thing. I, I don't recall. I have to watch that again. 
So uh, pray for us, and you know we need to support our artists. We need to uh, continue to do this work. Um, it's, it's important in this lost and dying world. Uh, we need to shine the light of Christ. And the Sherwood Baptist Church was looking at they had the finances to do outreach. This was the most effective, the most productive way to reach people with the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, what is the, the the best way to reach people? What are people um, listening to most of all? And it's like, well, they realize it's through film. Film is the most influential medium out there. So this church decided, well, why don't we get into Christian filmmaking? And they've made a big difference. Just one church in Georgia. So all of us can make a difference in supporting uh, Christian filmmaking. And I'm going <laughs> to take what I've already done and uh, finally put it out there. I have on my channel uh, Episodic Productions that uh, my brother Josiah and I started for these ventures. Um, we have two playlists on the St. Jude uh, story and I'm going to have a new one, a new St. Jude Thaddeus uh, series. So I hope you can support that and I'll go through uh, all the footage I have in that. If someone wants to help in any way, appreciate it. Um, the pastor of King of Saints, and we do have a nonprofit uh, ministry as well, uh, New Heritage Ministry. So, and the other thing is just like and subscribe to my channel and keep uh, uh, follow us there on our YouTube channel, support our work. So, we thank you and God bless you.